So let us now talk about the concept of continuous compounding. With continuous compounding, there is no concept of number of periods. So earlier we said say two periods per year or four periods. Now with continuous compounding, these concepts don't exist. The idea is that your interest is compounding continuously. So we don't need to get into the derivation, but the formula that you need to know is very simple. The future value after n years is equal to present value into the mathematical e to the power of r, which is the interest rate, times t, which is the time in years. Which uh, Let's take a very simple example. Let's say that you start with $100, so that's the PV, and the stated interest rate, the stated rate is equal to 10%. Then the future, and let's say what will happen after 5 years. The future value after 5 years will be equal to 100 times e to the power of rate, which will now be stated as a decimal, which is 0 0.1 times t, which is 5. So the future value after 5 years is 100 times e to the power of 0 0.5, which is equal to 0.5. So this is equal to 164.87. All right, so very simple. What if you were given the future value and you needed to find the present value? Then that's pretty straightforward. So present value would be equal to future value at time n divided by e to the power of rt or at times you might simply see future value at times n times e to the power of minus rt. So these are formulas that you know the derivation is complex and the CFA Institute does not require you to know the derivation. Now let's work on our example. Suppose you deposit 1000 rupees in an account that pays 12% interest compounded continuously. This 12% is sometimes also referred to as the stated rate. And then it's qualified that the interest is compounding continuously. How much will be in the account after 8 years if there are no withdrawals? Look at the formula now. So the future value after 8 years is equal to present value into e to the power of, remember this is t and this is the rate r. So 1000 into z, e to the power of 0 0.96 which is 2611.7. And I would encourage you to do this on the calculator in case you are unsure where to find the e button. You will notice on the Texas Instrument Calculator somewhere on the middle left there is ln and e to the power of x is written just above it. So, so to get to use e to the power of x you need to actually first click the second button. So the exact keystrokes would be for this case you would do 0 0.96 and then you would press the second button and then you would press the ln which is really e to the power of x because you put it into second mode and that will give you the answer for e to the power of 0 0.96 and then you simply multiply that with a thousand. So let's move on. Okay, so annuities. An annuity represents a series of payments or receipts occurring over a specified number of equidistant periods. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you need to make payments of dollars hundred every year for three years. So if you draw a timeline, time zero, one, two, three, and you are making equal payments of hundred 
over three equidistant periods. So one year, one year, one year. So this is an example of a annuity. Had it been five periods or ten periods, this would still be an annuity. And if the amount had been a thousand or ten thousand or anything, any number, as long as it's the same number over the periods, this would be an annuity. Examples of annuities include student loans. So when you take a student loan, typically you repay the loan with equal amounts. Typically this is done monthly. So, so that would be student loan payments would be an annuity, car loan payments, insurance premiums, mortgage payments, retirement savings. So all these typically represent annuities. An ordinary annuity is an annuity whose payments are made at the end of each period. So at the end of a month or end of a year, the example that I gave you on the previous, the examples I gave on the previous slide were generally ordinary annuities. So if one saves a thousand a year at the end of every year for three years in an account earning 7% interest compounded annually, how much one will one have at the end of a third year? So let's do this both using calculate using uh, the timeline and basic mathematical formulas and then using a calculator. So whenever you see a problem like this, the first thing you do is draw the timeline. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and you save a thousand a year. This is an ordinary annuity and you are saving therefore at the end of every year. So you have thousand, thousand and thousand. So what is the future value? So how much will you have at time 3? The way you think about this is this thousand after 3 years will become what? Given that the interest rate is 7%, the future value for this thousand two years later, remember you are getting this at the end of year one, how much will this become at the end of year three, which is two years later? This will become thousand into 1.07 square. So that's how much this will become and you can do the calculation. What will this, this thousand become? So this will become a thousand and you multiply thousand by 1.07 and you have an amount over here which I want you to fill in. And what about the thousand at the end of year three? So that is thousand at the end of year three. You don't need to do any work there. So you just keep that thousand. The total amount you will have at the end of year three will be that thousand plus the amount you calculated here plus the amount that you calculated over here. So that's the long-winded way of doing this, but conceptually you need to understand how to solve this problem. What about doing this on the, on the business calculator? The way you do it on the calculator, remember earlier we constantly put payment equal to zero. Now we'll actually use the payment function. So you put in N, which is the number of years here, which is three. You put in interest rate is equal to 7%. You put in a present value of 0 because you don't have any money at the beginning. Payment is actually equal to 1000. So these are the equal payments being made over 3 years. The, the future value is what you then compute. So then you say compute future value and the calculator will give you an answer. So I will also do that for you very quickly. Actually it's done on this slide. So the future value if you do the calculation will actually turn up to be so what you will get or what you should get when you do all this is 3, 2, 1, 5. So I'd like to pause I'd like you to pause here and make sure that you can get this answer using both the both the long-winded method as well as this method on the calculator. On the exam, you should always use the calculator for problems like this. 
All right. Let's look at another example. If one agrees to repay a loan by paying thousand dollars a year at the end of every year for three years, and the discount rate is seven percent, how much would one borrow today? So this is actually a present value of an annuity. Let's draw this out again. What we are saying is at time one, time two, and time three. So we are going to pay thousand, thousand, thousand at the end of year one, year two, year three. And the question is, what is the present value of these three numbers? The long-winded way of doing this is to calculate the present value of each one of these. So the present value of thousand given a seven percent interest rate. So that present value would be one thousand divided by one point zero seven. This will become one thousand divided by one point zero seven squared, and the final payment three years from today, the present value for that will be one thousand divided by one point zero seven cubed. So we find these three numbers, which is what I want you to do. So find these three numbers, add add them up, and what you should have is the present value of these three payments at time zero. So go ahead and do this calculation. The next way to do this, and the one that you should use on the exam, is is uh, is basically using the financial calculator. Where you will set n is equal to three, interest rate is equal to seven percent. The present value is what you will compute. You will again put in a payment of thousand, and future value is equal to zero. Notice that thousand, thousand, thousand over three years. So that's the payment. There is nothing beyond thousand. At year three, which means future value is zero. If you are getting some more money beyond thousand, the additional amount would be future value. But here there is nothing beyond the payment, so future value is zero. And you simply will compute your, so you will compute your present value. Okay. So these numbers are done for you. The present value that you should get. Should simply be the sum of, so it should be the sum of nine thirty four, eight seventy three, and eight one six. And I will have you do that calculation. Do not move on until you actually get this problem right. And just to make sure that you get it right, I'm actually just going to give you the the answer right now. The answer that you should get on the calculator is PV is equal to minus two eight zero eight. And notice that since all the payments are positive, the present value will be negative. That's just the calculator convention. On the exam, typically they will not show a negative number. So on the exam, if you see two eight zero eight, that is the answer that you simply check. So now let's talk about the future value of an ordinary annuity. Take a simple example. Interest rate is equal to 10%, and you are getting payments of 200, 200, 200 at the end of year one, year two, and year three. So the question is, what is the future value over here? So essentially, this 200, this 200, and this 200. So collectively. They are equivalent to a certain future value at the end of three years. So you would be indifferent to these three payments or one payment represented by this future value. What is that future value? Doing it uh, mathematically, all you need to do is say, okay, at the end of two years, at the end of three years, you will get this 200. So the value of this 200 at the end of three years is 200. What about the value of this second 200? 200 at the end of two years, 
how much will this be at the end of year 3? This will simply be 200 into 1.1. So you can do that calculation. And what about this 200? This will become 200. So this will be 200 into 1.1 square. So add those up. 200 plus, so that's the first one. Second one, third one, shown over here. So 200 into 1.1 squared plus 200 into 1.1 plus 200 and you get, you should get 662. On the calculator, you would plug in N equal to 3, interest rate 10%, payment, notice that if you put in payment of minus 200 and you put and you actually, you can do this explicitly but uh, you can also just put in present value is equal to zero because there is nothing going in at time zero and then you compute future value you will get 662 had you put in positive 200 then the future value would have been negative remember the calculator convention is that the output is always going to be a different sign from what you put in so make sure you do this on the calculator and get the right answer. Comparing present value to future value, remember both quantities must be present value amounts or both quantities must be future value amounts in order to be compared. So the point being if you are comparing two payments, so dollar hundred and dollars 120 so if you are comparing this dollar 100 at time t equal to 0 and this t is equal to 120 is at t equal to 3 so to compare you can't simply say 100 is better or 120 is better either you must take the 120 and find its present value at time 0 and let's say that the interest rate is obviously you will need an interest rate so when you find the interest rate when you find the present value with an interest rate of 10 percent for three years you are going to get a number that is less than 100 so in this scenario with an interest rate of 10 percent 100 dollars today is better than 120 dollars three years from today the point being that you are comparing, you need to bring different numbers into the same time period in order to compare. The other way of doing this would have been to say, okay, what is the future value of 100? So the future value of 100, you would say, okay, in three years time, this will become 100 into 1.1 cube. And notice that this number will be something greater than 120. So no matter which way you do this, having hundred dollars today is better than having hundred dollars in hundred and twenty dollars in three years assuming an interest rate of ten percent critical point i'll repeat this both quantities must be present value amounts or both quantities must be future value amounts in order to be compared annuity due an annuity due is an annuity whose payments are made at the beginning of each period, example beginning of a month or beginning of a year. In other words, it is an annuity whose payment is to be made immediately rather than at the end of the period. For example, in many lease arrangements, the first payment is due immediately and each successive payment must be made at the beginning of each month. So let's look at an example again. Let's say that you are making five lease, uh, five lease payments over a period. So three, four, five. Now, if you need to make thousand dollar payments at the start of every period so five periods here that means that when must the first when is the start of period one the start of period one is actually time zero so you need to make a thousand dollar payment here at the start of period one then a thousand dollar payment at the start of period two notice that the start of period two is the same as the end of period one 
and you go on. So you are making five payments again, but these payments happen at the start of every period. And this is called a annuity due. So the same concept. So what's the similarities and difference between annuity due versus ordinary annuity? So the similarity is that we have equal amounts and you have equal uh, equal time between payments but what is the difference difference is when do they start so with the annuity due you you know the difference is that with an annuity due you start right at the beginning of a period and with the ordinary annuity the payments are made at the end of a period Look at an example. So you have an annuity due where interest rate is 10% and you are making payments of 200, 200 and 200 at the beginning of period 1, beginning of period 2 and beginning of period 3. What is the present value of these three payments? Multiple ways to do this. The, the brute force way is to simply say, okay, the present value of 200 today is 200. What's the present value of this 200? This would be 200 divided by 1.1. And what's the present value of this? The present value, if you bring this all the way back, this would be 200 divided by 1.1 squared. And the answer would be 547.11, which is something I want you to do also. How do you use a calculator? One way is to say that these two payments are like an ordinary annuity with n equal to 2. So you set n equal to 2, interest rate 10%, payment is minus 200, FV is 0, and you compute PV of 347.11. Notice from before, the present value for an annuity, the answer that you get is a present value one period before the first payment. So the present value of 347.11 given to you by the calculator is a number that exists or that is relevant one period before the first payment. So you get 347.11 which is the present value of this and this. We did not include 200 here so we need to add it and we now have 547.11 which is the same answer as this. What is another method? Another method is to say n is equal to 3, interest rate is 10%, payment is minus 200, FV is 0, and you get a present value that is at time minus 1. So if you, if you simply do this, you will get a present value of 497.37, which is the present value at time minus 1. So to bring that to time 0, you simply multiply this by 1.1 and get 547.11. If you did not quite understand that, not a very big deal. A third method is to put your calculator into annuity due mode or what's called begin mode. You do this by clicking second and then begin on the calculator, which is just above the payment button and then second again and set which is above the enter button and then second quit which is above the compute button. When you do this you will notice a small BGN on the top right of your calculator. So this is saying that you are in begin mode. Now the calculator assumes that all payments are at the beginning of the period. So to find the present value, you simply say n is equal to 3, interest rate is 10%, payment is minus 200, future value is 0. And when you compute the present value, it will give you the present value at time 0. Once you are done with this problem, you need to get back into regular mode. And you do so by going through the exact same steps. And when you do these steps again, you will notice that the begin mode will go away. 62. Let us now talk about the future value of an annuity due. So take the same example, payments of 200, 200 and 200. 
at the beginning of year one, beginning of year two, and beginning of year three. The first point that is extremely important is that the future value for these three payments is the future value at time at time three, so at this point. And the simple way of doing it, or the mathematical way of doing it, is the future value of 200, which is like this, and then the future value of this, and the future value of the first 200. So, so the 200 from here is 200 multiplied by 1.1. The 200 at this point would give us 200 into 1.1 squared and the first 200 compounds for 3 years so that would be 200 into 1.1 cube. So take those 3, add them up and you have your future value which should be 728.20 and this again I must emphasize is the amount at the end of year 3 even though the final payment was made at the end of year two. That is a characteristic of an annuity due. The simpler way of doing it is to put your calculator in begin mode, which we have just talked about, and then plug in N is 3, interest rate 10%, payment of minus 200, present value 0, and when you compute your future value, you will get 728.20. What is a perpetuity? A perpetuity is an annuity in which the periodic payments begin on a fixed date and continue indefinitely. It is sometimes referred to as a perpetual annuity. Scholarships paid perpetually from an endowment fit the definition of a perpetuity. So for example, if if you get a you know if, if you for example get ten dollars every year forever this is a perpetuity and the way this can be written is 0 1 2 3 on 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 so ten dollars ten dollars ten dollars ten dollars so if you get this forever and ever the same amount after equal periods this is a perpetuity typically you will be given a certain interest rate and the way you calculate the present value of all these payments. Notice that the present value is the value of all these payments one period before the first payment. So the present value is the annuity amount which is 10 in this case divided by let's say that the interest rate is 10 percent which is 0 0.1 so you would have 10 over 0 0.1 which is equal to 100. So the present value so essentially that is like saying that between having $100 today uh, versus getting $10 every year forever, you would be indifferent. So $100 today is the same as getting $10 every year forever at an interest rate of 10%. Now just for, for once in your life, what I want you to do is, this might seem a little counterintuitive, but do the calculation. So either manually or on Excel. So find the present value of this, present value of this, present value of this, and do this for 20 terms. And you will notice that if you do this for 20, you will get a number just a little bit below 100. What's happening is that, let's say this 100 after you know, a thousand years, what's the present value of this? The present value of that would be 100 divided by 1.1 to the power of 1000 which would almost be zero. So because of the impact of discounting the $10 that you are getting after long periods of time will be very very small in present value terms. So again the derivation is complex but the ultimate formula is simple and one that you must know the present value of an annuity is equal to the annuity payments $10 here divided by the interest rate and the other important point is that the present value at time zero would be would be the present value where the first payment you are receiving is after one period if you are even getting a payment of ten dollars at time zero then you would simply add the ten dollars to the present value that you get from this formula okay a quick example investment offers 100 per year forever and if the required rate of return is 10% how much is this worth we actually just did this 
So the present value is 100 divided by 0 0.1, which is equal to 1000. What if you have uneven cash flows? So no cash flow at time 0. At period 1, you have minus 1000, then minus 500, then 0, and so on. Uh, let me just first quickly tell you how this would happen using the brute force method. And you probably already know this by now, but just to make sure. So you go period 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So you plug in the amount. So you have minus 1000, and then minus 500, and then period 3 is 0, and then 4000, 3500, and 2000. So you find the present value of all these. How do you do the present value of minus 1000? It would be minus 1000. Let's say the interest rate here is 10%. So the present value would be minus 1000 divided by 1.1. 1 .1. And then to that you add minus 500 over 1.1 1 .1 squared. To that you add 4000 over 1.1 to the power of 4 and so on. So you get the present value of all these terms and add them up. But don't use this approach on the exam because it's too long. What you must do on your calculator is use the cash flow function. And essentially you will simply input these numbers into your calculator. You will give an interest rate of 10% or whatever is required of you and you would calculate the net present value. So the keystrokes on your calculator first click the cash flow button and then second clear work. This clears all the memory and then hit zero enter. That says that the initial cash flow at time zero is zero. Then hit the down arrow and thousand plus minus tells that the input is negative and that is basically saying that cash flow at time zero is minus 1000 hit the down arrow twice and then enter 500 plus minus to say that this is a negative payment and essentially you've told the calculator that the cash flow at time zero is minus 500 and you keep doing this until you have entered 2000 for cash flow number six and finally you hit the down arrow compute you will then specify an interest rate of 10% and then when you calculate NPV, the system, the calculator will give you the NPV. Calculate this a few times and um, you will find that this is quite simple. How do you deal with, uh, so again, here is another example for you to do. You have uneven cash flows. How do you find the future value? You can simply take the 300, calculate future value, 600, calculate the future value, and this 200, and then you simply add them up. 200 plus the future value of 600 plus the future value of 300, add them all up. The final point in this rather long but very important reading is on amortization. So how do you construct an amortization schedule to show the interest and principal components of the end of year payments for a 10% 5 year $10,000 loan. So the way you can think of this is you are borrowing $10,000 and you need to make payments over 5 years at the end of every year and, and the interest rate is 10%. So the way you can think of this is as follows. The present value at time 0 is 10,000 because that's the value of the loan. And then for year one, year two, three, four, and five, you need to make certain payments that, that these payments, you want to make sure that the present value of these payments is equal to 10,000 given an interest rate of 10%. So what do you tell the calculator? You say n is equal to five because we have five periods. Interest rate is 10%. Present value is minus 10,000 because we want the payment to be a positive number. And then you compute payments. So the payments that the, the number will be 2637.97. Make sure that you can get this on your calculator. So that's basically saying that your annual payments are 2637.97.
So the way the amortization schedule would work, your initial balance, the amount you owe initially is 10,000. At the end of year one, you make this payment 2637.93. The way you calculate the interest component of 10%, this is of, of 1,000. This 1,000 is 10% times 10,000. So that's how you get this. How do you get the principal? So if the interest is 1,000, you made a payment of 2637. The principal that you paid is 2637 minus 1000, which is 1637.97. And then how do you get the ending balance? The ending balance would be 10,000 from here. So 10,000 minus the principal component of 1637.97, and that will give you your ending balance. So this ending balance becomes the beginning balance next year. The payment is the same because remember these are five equal payments. The interest component 836 is 10% of the beginning balance. The principal component would be the payment minus the interest. And the ending balance again would be the beginning balance minus the principal. So do this calculation and notice that at the end of five years your ending balance is zero. So that's it for this.